And well, the former Indian diplomat Dilip Sinha is now joining us for the very latest on this. And Ambassador Dilip Sinha, thanks very much indeed for talking to us this evening. Uh, you know, to just to get a larger picture, what is your assessment of where we are now uh, after Wing Commander Abhinandan is back? Uh, and what is your assessment of the last couple of days between India and Pakistan? But this development of uh, the returning of Wing Commander Abhinandan has definitely been a positive development. Uh, it, it has reduced tension certainly to a certain extent. Uh, now we hope that uh, Pakistan follows up on this uh, with reducing the tension on the line of control as well, because these violations that are taking place that, are, that seem to have increased uh, need to be controlled. Once that is done, then we can perhaps look at further action against the terrorist groups that have become active. Uh, and if Pakistan, as it claims, uh, it has a common interest in this, then it should perhaps take, take some action against these terror groups. Uh, there are reports, as you have mentioned, of the Al-Badr group increasing recruitment. Uh, we hope that Pakistan will now start taking action against this as well. If uh, Imran Khan continues with his uh, with, the, with the gesture that he had made uh, in returning uh, Wing Commander uh, Abhinandan. Right. And, but Ambassador Sinha, uh, you know, the gesture has already, uh, you know, sort of been completely... Uh, in a sense, done away with with the fact uh, that they put out a video, a ghost video of Wing Commander Abhinandan with multiple cuts. Obviously, it is something that's uh, been, uh, you know, he's been forced to say uh, where he's uh, been forced to, of course, uh, uh, praise the Pakistani army and, of course, uh, go after the Indian media. Uh, do you think that was completely in bad taste? Yes, it was. It was in completely in bad taste and also in violation of Geneva Conventions because uh, they are not supposed to make publicity out of uh, prisoners of war. Uh, that was uh, completely uncalled for. And uh, well, we, we, have, we can only uh, condemn such, such acts. But at the same time, as I mentioned, the, the gesture of returning must also be appreciated. Right, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the larger diplomatic pressure that has been put on uh, Pakistan in the last couple of week, uh, days, particularly uh, after what happened, uh, you know, day before yesterday. Uh, now, the Americans are seeking more information when it comes to the F-16s. They have clearly uh, evidence now that the end-user agreement has been violated by Pakistan. Do you think there will be more pressure coming uh, Pakistan's way, uh, at least as far as America is concerned? Yes, that is very important. International pressure is extremely important at this stage because that is the most uh, positive and, uh, and effective diplomatic uh, effort that can be put to bring this uh, issue to a, a, a conclusion. Uh, Pakistan has been buying aircraft from Pakistan in the, from, the, from the U.S. in the past as well and misusing those even earlier aircraft purchases and defense purchases were meant for other purposes. Uh, it's fortunate that in this particular case there was a specific provision that was put in, in the sale of end use of the aircraft. And uh, we hope that America will uh, call Pakistan to account on this uh, in this matter, so that the misuse of this aircraft, which are given to Pakistan by the United States for action against terror groups, uh, is not done, uh, is not used for promoting terrorism. Right. And Ambassador Sinha, now let's come uh, to the other things that's happened in the last couple of days. Despite the heat that Pakistan has faced as far as the Jaish Muhammad is concerned, and particularly Masood Azhar, uh, why do you think the Pakistani foreign minister went on record at two international uh, channels saying that they have Masood Azhar, saying that he's sick, and also admitting that, well, he's so sick he can't really do anything, uh, and he's also not to be blamed for the Pulwama attack? Well, that is, uh, I, I don't know why he, he said this, because, but the fact is that uh, the fact that Masood Azhar lives in Pakistan is well known. There have been reports in the past of his activities uh, from the Pakistani media itself. Uh, but this is a, a, a confirmation that's come from the top level. Of course, he's tried to cover it up or tried to excuse himself by saying that he's extremely ill. And that's not an excuse for, for giving him shelter. Uh, and uh, this denial that Jaish e Muhammad is not involved in uh, the attack in Pulwama is really farcical because uh, Jaish, e, Jaish e Muhammad itself has uh, claimed and uh, taken credit for this uh, for this uh, terrorist act. Right. And Ambassador Sinha, now after every terror attack in India, the, the Pakistanis, of course, ask for you know evidence in this this round as well despite as you said the uh, jesh muhammad admitting that they are responsible for the pulwama attack the pakistanis have gone on record to say 
we need credible evidence. Do you think the time has gone or passed uh, for giving them credible evidence? Because clearly, both in the Pathan court uh, case and in 2611, we had given them dossiers after dossiers and in, in, in evidence otherwise as well. But it, has, it really hasn't worked. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we have given them evidence in the past and they have uh, completely ignored them, uh, trashed them. Uh, in any case, uh, they have all the evidence with them. So asking for evidence is, is, is actually quite, uh, again, quite farcical. But at the same time, we must keep collecting this evidence because it's important to present this evidence also to the international community and uh, expose Pakistan's duplicity in this matter. Right, but at the very onset of this show, you said that, you know, uh, things have calmed down now, that we've seen a de-escalation, there's been a good move from Imran Khan. But where do you really see us going from here? Because there's, this is a cyclical relationship we have with Pakistan, where, you know, we have ups and downs, and then the, uh, with every lull comes another terror attack, or something else happens. Uh, where do you see the shift coming going forward? Well, uh, unfortunately, the relationship is such, and Pakistan's policy is such, that one can't expect uh, a prolonged period of genuine peace, uh, at least in the near future. Uh, Pakistan has to give up its policy of promoting terrorism. It has to uh, understand that it cannot possibly work against India's territorial integrity and yet expect to be, uh, to be talking peace with India. And as far as India is concerned, we just have to accept the fact that Pakistan is promoting terrorism against us and we have to protect ourselves, defend ourselves, both in, uh, from the terror attacks and uh, the integrity, territorial integrity of our country. Right. And also, uh, uh, Ambassador Sina, now I just want to ask you about the Financial Action Task Force, which has now, of course, uh, been putting immense pressure on uh, Pakistan to sort of give some, uh, you know, uh, to meet its targets when it comes to financial uh, money laundering and terror financing by May this year. Also, the UNSC is now going to be headed by France, which is a, a clear support of India when it comes to Masood Azhar. Do you think because of both these things, there will be immense pressure on Pakistan now to act against Masood Azhar despite its denials? And maybe we'll see some action at the UNSC against Masood Azhar as well, finally. Well, if uh, China in particular uh, uh, takes a step back and allows the uh, Security Council to list uh, Masood Azhar, then that will definitely be a positive development. And uh, it would then be possible to put additional pressure upon Pakistan. Uh, the FATF is extremely important because the FATF's recommendations will be taken into account by organizations like the IMF, which are considering uh, giving uh, financial assistance to Pakistan. So, uh, and all there are other factors also that, that uh, especially in terms of increasing international finance uh, uh, and taking loans from abroad, uh, the FATF's uh, report in these cases uh, will be of great value. So it is, these, uh, it is this kind of pressure that India must continue to, to bring on Pakistan directly and indirectly through other uh, countries to uh, ensure that Pakistan realizes that it is uh, it, that, that it has a price to pay for the terrorism that is that it is promoting.